I tolerate every music fan and don't look down on people based on their music taste. My opinion is not superior to anybody else's opinion. Calling stands insane is pathetic and very petty. Stop right there. This is a post made by YouTube user Hip Hop Universe over six months ago. Actually, it was posted exactly one day after part one of my Eminem stand series got released. And pay attention to the thumbnail. Yeah, this is very obviously a response to that video. Not even that video, that thumbnail. So maybe you're asking yourself, who the fuck is Hip Hop Universe? Let me just say this. At the end of every episode so far, I've given people a rating of how much of a stand they are. Nobody has come past a six. I'm saying this right now, Hip Hop Universe is a 10 out of 10 stand. A true embodiment of what a stand is and what a stand is supposed to be. So what makes someone a 10 out of 10 stand? What does that even look like? Well, for me to show you, we first have to establish what being a stan even means. Stanley! What? Don't call me Stan. that, okay? Don't call Why me that. Why do you think you're taking this too far? For a lot of people, when they hear stan, they think Nicki Minaj stan or K-pop stan or even NBA Youngboy stan. But stans can present themselves in many different ways. And no matter the context, pretty much in every case, we can break standing down into irrational bias and obsession and both of those are universally looked down upon and seen as negative traits. And even me saying this is kind of stupid and obvious because we all know what the word means, and that's because the history and the origin of the word is well documented. I mean, we all heard the fucking song. We all heard the song where Eminem describes an obsessed stalker fan who kills his girlfriend and himself because he's so infatuated with Eminem. This is not some sort of open for interpretation type definition. This is pretty cut and dry. By definition, stands are insane. According to Hip Hop Universe, pointing this out is pathetic and very petty. Before we go through the rest of his comment and explanation, I have to introduce you to who Hip Hop Universe is. The Hip Hop Universe channel, 1.3 million subscribers, and he should just probably rename his channel to Watch Mojo Universe because all he does are lists and rankings. But hey, I'm not a fucking asshole. I'm not just gonna come to his channel just to judge. You know, who am I to judge? I'm not the content messiah. Certainly, my content is as shitty as anybody's content. So let's just gauge what his music taste is like by watching his list of the worst rappers of all time. So keep in mind, out of all the rappers that ever existed, these are the worst. The absolute bottom of the barrel. Irredeemably bad. Pathetically awful. Harder than a motherfucking Flintstone. Making crack rocks out of pussy nigga fish bone. What a dramatic ending. And tell me he did not just put the R.I.P. hip hop in text over the praying Tupac image. I can't make this shit up. So already, one video in, it's pretty clear to see what kind of individual we're dealing with here. He's obviously not fond of the new generation, to put it lightly. But you know, to each his own. I'm not saying this is a bad list at all. I actually thought this video was great. Amazing, actually. As a fellow enjoyer of music myself, I fully appreciated the part where he put French Montana as a better rapper than Kanye West. Absolute shocker and plot twister. Did not see it coming, but 100% agree. He of course made a part two of the same list, which may be even better than part one. And that in itself says a lot. <laughs> Thank you. 
a hip hop universe is so old school, even his memes are outdated. That's crazy. Where the spitters go? Garbage little shit they wrote. Miss me with that little boat, cause bigger individuals committed to these principles is living on their tippy toes, sinking with the hippies' hope, consider them the missing throats. We have reached the point in hip hop where non rappers like Shia LaBeouf rap better than any rapper in 2016. So according to Hip Hop Universe, Shia LaBeouf is bodying Prime Kendrick. Bro, just look at his hand movements. You support this? This is what you like? Bigger individuals committed to their principles. Shut the fuck up. Don't know, just know. That's wild because he actually thinks this shit goes hard. Like he thinks Shia LaBeouf coming out of his $8 million mansion to rap about how this new rap just isn't up to par. It just isn't lyrical. He thinks that's amazing. And you may have noticed like pretty much every new and young rapper is on this list. Doesn't matter if they're lyrical or not lyrical. If you are born after 1990, you're one of the worst rappers of all time. Like who the fuck hates Schoolboy Q? Who hates YG? Ab Soul? What, what are these picks? This doesn't even make sense. I mean, I understand like Future, Lil Uzi, 21 Savage, the usual, but this guy's just taking it to the next level. There seems to be a clear bias here, but to clear this up, Mr. Hip Hop has a message for us at the end of this video, so uh, roll the clip. Get the hell out of here. Get the hell out of here. Wait, wait, wait. Get the hell out of here. Get the fuck out of here. I want people to know is that don't, don't support the phonies. Hip hop used to be a form of education, but now it's on the decline because you are supporting it. Today's music industry consists of dumb artists who use dumb lyrics to dumb down their listeners so that they demand dumber music, in parentheses, vicious cycle. You know you have a strong argument when you call someone dumb four times in the same sentence. <laughs> Tupac, yo big, think they miss us? Big, doesn't seem like it man. We died for you, we gave you everything. Yo, what the fuck is this? What the fuck, is this hip hop fan fiction? This is disgusting. Yo, hip hop universe, just fucking sell this image off as an NFT so I can buy it and hide it from the world from ever having to see it again. And you know, the funny thing about the fact that he dropped that slur earlier is that this is literally the gayest shit I have ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> Calling stands insane is pathetic and very petty. Everybody has a favorite artist. Some are just more vocal about it. So he's already equating standing to just being more vocal about your favorite artist because stands, they're not obsessed, they're not stalkers, they're not insane, they're just more vocal. So stands are more vocal about their favorite artist and others try to hide it while going at other people's throats for not doing the same. So everybody who isn't a stand is actually just hiding their favorite artist. Boy, if you don't get- Not only is he defending stands, he's actually saying stands are in the right and everybody else is in the wrong because everybody else is just attacking stands for no apparent reason. Stands are just normal people who are more vocal about their favorite artist. Nothing wrong with that. Like, bro, a stand is still a fucking stand. But here we have Hip Hop Universe creating this big ass fucking conspiracy claiming everybody is just hiding their favorite artist and stands are the only honest ones like only crazy people think this way people always call me an old head for being a hip-hop historian imagine unironically saying that bro hip-hop historian listen i don't have to agree with your point of view at all but what i should be able to do is understand it as a sane person now when we're talking about stands this goes out of the window because the reasoning behind their opinion isn't even rational to start with. It's purely driven by this obsession of whatever they have in mind. In this instance, the old school. And everything else is, according to them, wrong. So today we're gonna break down how they rationalize this mindset and why they even have it in the first place. Now watch me, I'm an old head. I got hip problems, knees problems, all that. But I'm still gonna sprint through the line. 
check me out. So yes, Hip Hop Universe is probably the biggest old school stand you could find. What makes him so special is the fact that he isn't actually old, just pretending to be. So he has to do all this crazy shit just to convince himself and others that he's truly down with the old school even though he's part of a younger generation. I know he posted he was a 90s kid so we know for a fact he's in his 20s acting like he fought in Vietnam. Old heads are not even allowed to listen to old music anymore without getting labeled as insane, retarded, or stuck in the past. Yeah, you're absolutely oppressed. You're the victim here. I mean, you literally go out of your way to shit on every new artist and you're somehow surprised when you get those reactions. Obviously, no one is gonna call you insane and retarded just for listening to Nas. But you know this already. Don't play the victim now, like you're the one who came in this bitch raising hell. This isn't real hip hop, this is trash, these new rappers aren't good. Now you're gonna turn around and hit us with the fucking, come on everybody, we should just respect each other's opinions and you can't disrespect hip hop legends while you yourself are actively disrespecting every new rapper. What the fuck are you on? One thing I hate the most is a young old head. Now there's a big difference between young old heads and real old heads. Because real old heads can actually remember a time where they were actively following the music scene. And of course they have fond memories tied to the music from that era. So it's only logical that they're gonna enjoy it more than the music today. Yes, it gets a little bit annoying, but it's understandable because nostalgia's a bitch. Nostalgia does what it's supposed to do. Now the reason why young old heads, fake old heads, are so much more annoying and worse than real old heads is they don't have any of these memories. None of them actually got to experience the eras they're so desperately jacking. And since they don't really have any memories tying them back to that time, what they have to do is imagine the world 20 30 years ago and of course when they do that they're gonna imagine a perfect world because why would you imagine a flawed world taking that into consideration of course today's world pales in comparison that's why you get so many people saying damn I wish I was alive during the 80s life was so much better back then like how the fuck would you know and just to clarify I'm not talking about anybody who just has two biggie songs on their Spotify playlist I don't want anyone to mix up the regular person who just enjoys old-school music with the fake old head They're two completely different things. Did you know you can actually spot a fake old head from a mile away? And this is how you recognize them. It's actually very easy. The fake old head is gonna argue with you, talking about my era is much better than your era, even though they weren't even alive back then. Just creating a contest for no reason, creating a contest where there shouldn't be one. They love overcompensating for lack of actual credibility. While the real old head will have the maturity level and be wise enough to tell you, I don't really care, or hey, this new stuff, I understand why you others like it, it's just not for me. But with young old heads, for some reason, this always devolves into some kind of superiority complex. Because uh, they don't listen to the music their peers are listening to. No, 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 no. They listen to music from 30 years ago, and that makes them unique and special and better than everybody else. And the funniest thing is, they try to present it like it's some kind of curse that nobody likes the music they like. But they secretly enjoy that shit. I know that for a fact. New school hip hop has different types of lyrics. Rappers from today's generation sing typically about girls, money, and cars they have. Some even sing about how they do drugs, drink alcohol, and party. Jesus Christ. Which sets a bad example for some listeners. Now the second segment we're covering today is my personal favorite because it is absolutely the funniest. And it's based on this delusion that their opinion is the right opinion because they are fighting for a cause. They're trying to save hip hop guys. This is no laughing matter. I mean you have all these rappers talking about drugs and violence and sex and they're against that. 
They are strongly opposed to that. I mean, just think of all the kids just taking in all those bad influences. Oh my goodness, what are we gonna do? Now, luckily we know this is not a pressing issue because this has been a topic of conversation for the past couple of decades. It's just that in the past, it was blamed on comic books, then movies, then video games. And that in itself is such an uneducated boomer fucking Fox News take. But for you to claim to be a hip hop historian and still think rap songs are the primary reasons for violence, drug abuse, and all the bad shit, that just makes no sense because this is the one topic you should be educated on. If you did actually listen to all those songs in the 90s and 80s, did you just miss all the lyrics about oppression and fighting against the system? Like, did you miss all that and just catch the fucking, my flow is impeccable, the opposition's flows are not good. Not to mention, for their argument to make any sense in the first place, we are assuming that 90s and 80s rappers didn't rap about sex, violence, and alcohol, which they obviously did. Old heads pretend as if old school rappers exclusively talked about serious issues. And that's just not true. I also want to address how hypocritical this way of thinking can often be because when a new generation rapper gets killed, it's always, can these young rappers stop shooting each other? Please stop with the guns and the violence, please. But at the same time, they'll post memes that say 90s rap versus today's rap. And for today's rap, it'll be like a picture of Lil Nas X wearing a dress or some shit like that. Like if you actually care about stopping gun violence and rappers not shooting each other, why do you clown artists who don't have that gangster persona? Who don't talk about shooting people in their lyrics? Like is that not what you want? But no, they just wanna have it both ways. They wanna say the new school isn't as tough as the old school and how the new school isn't gangster enough. And then at the same time, turn around and complain about how the new school is too violent and they should stop the killing. I actually wanna know how old heads think this way. How can they not see that they're the ones encouraging that behavior? They're the ones perpetuating the rapper stereotype. They want rappers to look and act a certain way. And this doesn't just apply to male artists because make no mistake, Old heads do not discriminate. They do it with female rappers too. Look at y'all looking ass niggas. Stop looking at my ass ass niggas. I mean, it's lying ass niggas. Bunch of non mogul ass niggas fronting like they got a. Artists like her are responsible for the downgrading of women. White is back and better than before, as if that was. This is how a woman gets her respect from an equal male. <laughs> Bro, how do I just know women find you unattractive? There's only two groups of people that have this cover yourself up lady mentality. Incels and overprotective dads. Also, how does she get respect? Well, by putting on a suit and walking around with two bodyguards? That's your idea of respect? You know this is just a music video, right? And why the fuck do you even care about how women present themselves in the first place? None of that shit concern you. They only get one day to shine. The rest of the week is mine. Women should not be seen as sex objects. Wow, absolutely zero bitches. Now you have me convinced. All jokes aside, is he trying to say women weren't seen as sex objects in the 80s and 90s? Because just off the dome, hoes forgot to eat a dick and shut the fuck up. Gobble and swallow a nut up. Shut up and get my cash. Backhanded, pimp slapped backwards and left stranded. Just pop your collar, pimp convention, hoes for a dollar, damn. You think any of this shit would slide today? If a rapper said this today, they would be debabied instantly. No discussion about it. Now what's happening at 730? I, I, I can't take this. What, what is he saying? She wanted me Cardi. Hey, explain to me how, how this gonna make me a better man. Alternative rap fans can also be annoying. They're the ones calling traditional hip hop generic and boring. Maybe rap is not your genre then. So what, we should all respect your opinions, but when somebody else calls traditional hip hop generic and boring, rap is not for them. I thought your opinion wasn't superior to anybody else's opinion. What happened to that? 
Look, maybe I'm just hating and the music they listen to really is superior to the music everybody else listens to. And, I mean, how do we really know that's not the truth? I don't like Jonah Lucas, but somebody else might. And who am I to tell anybody their opinion is wrong? Remember, different people perceive art in different ways. And for us to be able to judge someone's opinion, we have to understand why they even have it in the first place. In my view, and the view of my music theorist father who, who went to music school, there are three elements to music. There is harmony, there, mm -hmm. is, there is melody, and there is rhythm. Some guy named Matt Daniels posted this very cool research on vocabulary in hip hop. And it basically shows how many unique words each individual rapper uses. Now, of course, Hip Hop Universe found this and thought it was the perfect opportunity to push his agenda. I lost the original post, but to sum it up, he said something along the lines of, a lot of new school lyricists aren't as lyrical as you think. This study proves guys like J. Cole aren't much more lyrical than guys like Young Thug, who is a mumble rapper. And the research basically shows Young Thug and J. Cole have used a similar amount of unique words in their career. But to act as if this proves anything about their lyrical abilities is fucking stupid. Now this is the point I'm trying to make. Lyricism is not measurable. You can't calculate it. There is no mathematical way to deduct how impactful someone's lyricism can be. And it seems that a lot of people just don't or can't understand this very simple notion. Like art, in general, is completely subjective. There is no objective truth in art. No one is right and no one is wrong. So using these numbers and calculations and statistics to try to prove anything regarding art is idiotic. And people who insist on doing that just to me show a complete lack of understanding for what this art form is trying to achieve in the first place. And not to single out hip hop universe because I think that applies to a lot of quote unquote hip hop heads. You know, everything has to be in front of them. The way they consume music, it's so surface level. Everything has to be so tangible. Despite claiming to be hip hop heads, they don't understand the subtleties of the hip hop art form. For example, this video where uh, Mr. Hip Hop ranks the 2020 double XL ciphers. And instead of just, you know, listening to the ciphers, like everybody else, enjoying or not enjoying them as they come, he has to do this stupid shit, where he, I guess, breaks down each element of the performance, ranks it separately, and then somehow combines all of the ratings together. And this is how he explains it right here. For the vocabulary score, I used a new formula that takes the following three categories into consideration. Proportion of unique words, complexity of words, and word count. Here are my calculations. Lil Keen, 57 out of 87, equals 0.6551. Complexity level, 1. Multiply with 0 0.8. 0 0.5241. Word count level, are you fucking kidding me how is this a real person i can't believe the fact that bro literally saw the double x cell ciphers come out and thought to himself let me pull out the calculator and it's as if he thinks like the more effort he puts in for no reason at all the more valid his opinions will be like you can't tell me this doesn't remind you of a robot trying to understand what music is for the first time. And I'm not gonna hold that against them because everybody has their unique talents, everybody's born a different way, and I'm sure you'd be a great fucking engineer or something like that. You'd be great working in a lab. But just when it comes to this, in my opinion, he uh, lacks perspective, to say the least. It just happens that I prefer music from the 70s, 80s, 90s, and early 2000s to the majority of today's songs. But I never capitalized never jumped at anybody's throat for liking something I dislike. And then, after saying this, and I'm not even joking, one sentence later, he states the following. As far as rap not having to be lyrical, every pioneer legend and OG will laugh to your face when you repeat that same lame excuse that you found on pages that have no clue about rap and the hip hop culture in general. I never jumped at anybody's throat for liking something I dislike. Like if this isn't jumping at somebody's throat, I don't know what is. 
He was preaching all this shit about acceptance and how we should respect each other and how we should respect other opinions. But then in the same post, he literally does the opposite. Absolutely no self-awareness. I'm trying to tell you, like practice what you preach, my God. And it's just hilarious that out of all the things that could have been the deal breaker, it's just this, you know, just the simple notion that rap doesn't necessarily have to be lyrical. Like that's where he draws the line. Now you've gone too far. People just want to have a villain in hip hop. It's cool. We can all coexist. I mean, the ego on this guy to think he's the villain in hip hop. Everybody just hates him. Watch Mojo Universe. How dare you make that list? Also, people want to have a villain in hip hop? Weren't you the one who made Lil Yachty and Lil Pump hip hop's biggest villains for like four years? Even after they were relevant? What the hell is wrong with people? No, what the hell is wrong with you? To cap this video off, I think the main characteristic that defines almost every stan is the lack of self-awareness. And we need to look no further because the prime example of this is our boy himself, Mr. Hip Hop who loves gatekeeping this genre. I mean, he's the one who decides what is and what isn't real hip hop. After all, he is a hip hop historian and that's not to be taken lightly. So based on this information, this guy has to be some grizzled OG who grew up in Brooklyn, lived through all the eras and was Biggie's plug and shit, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure nobody here thinks that's the case. But just for confirmation, Hip Hop Universe actually did a voice reveal. And spoiler alert, he's German as shit. Switch up for the dollars, but I guess the side effects are the commas. He's saying that people change their behavior to a negative and turn on you once you make large amounts of money. Some countries separate numbers with points instead of commas and use a single comma to separate the integer part from the decimal. And others don't use any form of separation. So it would have been more precise if he actually said that it's a side effect of the increasing digits as the jealousy that he's addressing is related to the actual numbers. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you heard it here first. The gatekeeper of hip hop has blonde eyebrows. I mean, just because you saw a couple of Tupac interviews and watched some old school documentaries doesn't mean you're qualified to lecture anybody about hip hop culture. And you're certainly not qualified to tell them to get the fuck out. Let's just get that straight right now. I just want to preface that it's always the people who are disconnected from the culture that love to preach about how hip hop is dead and how it has to be saved. Like it was even up to them to decide that in the first place. Not at one point did he stop and think to himself, hey, I'm German. Maybe I shouldn't be the one delivering this message. And maybe I'm not even fully aware of the circumstances overseas. But no, he just had to be a sassy little hip hop historian. Nobody can change my opinion and nobody should try to change yours. Peace. That's such a dangerous fucking mindset to have. Toxic mindset to have. Nobody's ever going to change my opinion and nobody's opinion should ever be changed. Imagine if that was the case like in general, like what, how, how far would we come as humans if everybody had that same mentality? I mean, of course he's German. In conclusion, yes, Oktoberfest universe is definitely a 10 out of 10 stand. Strong 10, numbers green as shit, the whole package. If you don't want to be like this guy, the key is just to care less. Find a hobby, anything, but the